In today's video, we're going to be fine tuning Tiny Llama on a custom data set. And if you haven't seen my previous video on how to install Tiny Llama, I'll have that video tagged in the description below if you want to watch that. So we're going to be using Unslot to help us with the fine tuning. And I'll show you what their GitHub looks like. Over here, you can use their notebook. I'm also going to have the notebook tagged below in the description. But you're able to fine tune this on a free GPU using Google Collab. And it increases the token context size from 2048 to 4096. They also allow you to train models faster. So the model that I fine tuned took, to, took about an hour and a half to fine tune, which is not that bad. I'm going to show you the code that I used to create the data set. So the original data set was the Alpaca Clean data set. And what I did is I wanted to be in this format. I wanted the message to come out in JSON format. So then there'll be a function call and there'll be arguments like this. So this was the version one that I created. I ended up changing the format, which I'll show you here in a second. So when we come down here, it gives us this example JSON, which is the instruction and then the input and the output. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we have our instruction. And then we have over here, we have our output. And as you can see, it's in JSON. So we were training the model to respond in this format for us. Then that way later we can parse it with a function call and with the arguments. So when I trained it the first time, it didn't do too well. And then when I trained it again, I added more epochs and then it did better. And it was actually able to respond in this format and give me a response with the message in here. But there was no function calling in there. So I decided to give it functions on the next time around and I'll show you what that data set looks like next. So I used the Glide function calling data set and these are conversations in here in this chat. So I was working on fine tuning a chat one, but then I decided to go back to the instruction one because the instruction one was doing better than the chat was. Putting this in an instruct format is what we're gonna be doing today. My data set when it was in the chat format looked like this. You can see the system, then you can see the functions they have available to use. This is how it would be called. System, function, metadata. So the metadata gets put in here of what the function is that you want it to be called. Then we have the user asking a question. In this instance, there they didn't have this available. So the system would say, sorry, I'm, I'm unable to do this. My current functions only allow me to get the exchange rate between two currencies. But there's a bunch of other examples in here. You can also look at this data set as well. I'll have all this information tagged below. But going back to this, so we've had to format that data set into instruct format. So what I did was I extracted the function calls and then we format the messages for the instruct. So a big thing with like machine learning is just the data that you have and having high quality data and then making sure it's in the right format. And then another thing is not overtrain and not overfit your model. So in here we format it for instruct and then we get our instruct formatted data set and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So now our data set has gone from, I'll show you what the original was looking like this to now looking like this. So you have access to the following functions, use them if required. And then we give it all of these functions. Okay, and then I'm going to show you what the response is. So then the message, and then down here you can see some function calls. As we go across, this one there was no function call called. There's, there's a lot of data in here, so I haven't gone through and cleaned it all up, made sure it's perfect. I just decided to train the model on it. So I don't know if everything is perfect, I've seen some of the things and they're they not correct. It's going to be in the format, but I don't know if the data is going to come out correct. So if you want to clean it up, you can go through and clean the data set up yourself. So now I'm going to show you guys how we're going to train the model on this data. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to open up the notebook and we're going to run this cell and you're going to see it over here connecting to the GPU and now we're connected to it. And it's gonna start downloading everything. So this is very easy, it's very plug and play. The only thing, if you wanna change the data, that's, that's on you, but this is all plug and play for you to train the model. And now, what we can see over here is, 
Usually the context window is 2048, but it's 4096. Okay, so next, so next we're gonna load it in 4-bit. We're gonna use the unsloth tiny llama BNB 4-bit. You you can use any model you want if you want to fine-tune it on a different model. So we're just gonna leave all these settings the same. We're not gonna touch anything in here. If you want to change the model around, you can. If you want to turn off load in 4-bit, you can as well. And then down here is where we're gonna prepare the data set and have it in the right format. So what we prompted is respond in JSON, instruction, input, and the response. And then it formats it from that data set that we had before. It puts it in the right format for the model to train it on. So then what we're gonna do is we load the data set in. This is the original data set. We are going to use the instruct data set. So I'm gonna change this. And then we're going to train it on 10% of the data. You could train on it on more if you want, but like, like I said, you want to be careful with overfitting. If anything, you can always lower the epochs and train it on more data and then figure out what's the best results for you. But this is where I got good results so far and it's able to respond back to me. I'm not, like I've tested the quality and the quality is okay, but I've been able to at least get it respond back to me in the JSON format, which is, that was my goal from it. What we're going to do in here is we're going to set up our trainer. All this is already set up for you. The only thing you need to change over here is the number of epochs. I, so I tested 10 and it did all right. I think 10 may have made the model overfit a little bit, but I just didn't feel like going through and keep refining it and testing and testing it. But for your data, you can do as you feel is needed. So then over here, you can also change the learning rate. I, le I kept the learning rate the same. And you can leave all those the same. So once it's done training, we're going to test the output. Let's load the model in. And what you're going to see is the model starts downloading. Okay, the model's downloaded. And now we're going to download the data set. And then it generates the training split and maps it. And then over here we have the trainer, pretty simple. And we'll just run that. Okay, so this right here would take around two hours and 43 minutes to do. And then you can monitor the training loss over here. So once the model's done training, so then you're gonna be able to come over here and test the model out. This will be your question that you have. So what we need to do, and we need to put in here a similar prompt and all the functions that we had before. And I'm gonna show you that here in a second with an inference script that I already have done. Then if you go down here, you're going to save you're going to save the model. You can save it locally if you'd like, or you can push the model to hugging face. This is going to save the LoRa adapter for the model. Then down here is the inference script on loading the PEF model with the model and then the LoRa model as well. And then applies those weights to it. So I'm going to show you my inference script because I've already fine tuned it. You just have to follow these steps and everything will be the same for you. Okay. So we're just going to inference the model. We're just going to be using the tiny llama version one adapter and we want it to be in this format. So we're just going to run what's two plus two. And it comes back. It's missing the function call, but it does put the message in the format that we want it in. Okay. Now we're going to test the version two adapter and we're going to have it be in this format. So we're going to say you're a helpful assistant with access to the following functions and it's a calculator and then it has these objects for the number and the operand and the second operand is a number and then what, what's the operator and it can be one of these so we're going to run this what's two plus two something basic and we'll see what we get back
So over here, we get it, we get the message. The result of two plus two is 44, which is wrong. But then it does call the function right here. And it says perform calculator, the operand. Okay, so this is wrong, five and 10 and with the plus. This might mean the model could be overfit to the training data. And also the training data may not be as good a quality um, as I said earlier. All right, y'all, I appreciate you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, just drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And I started my Discord community, so if you guys want to join, all the information is below in the description. So I hope to see you guys in there.